por el fondo del océano. Me enamoré de una bellísima sirena. Some more timeless ideas. See if this bird can do calculus as well as it could dance. Huh? Well, let's hope it could do calculus better than it can dance. Alright, so last time. Last time uh, uh, we did uh, a little bit of common sense and uh, a lot of fundamental theorem of calculus and we found uh, a whole bunch of areas. Uh, today, today what we want to do is uh, we want to continue uh, using common sense and imagining ideas and using the fundamental theorem of calculus but this time we want to find arc lengths okay that's it if you can imagine it it's still the motto if you can imagine it deep s will uh, the red s will add it okay uh, this time we're going to imagine uh, something that we already imagined before but uh, we're going to do a lot more work on it this time so before, if you have a, a, b, c on a right triangle, Pythagoras told you that uh, a square plus b square is equal to c square. We alluded to this before, and today we, we've got time today, so today it's time to put this problem to bed. Um, what if we had an itsy bitsy tiny little Pythagorean theorem? Uh, we call this side a ds, and we get the uh, similar relationship, but a microscopic version of it that uh, the diagonal squared it would be equal to the one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared exactly like uh, the Pythagorean theorem All right and today what we want to do is exploit exactly exactly this idea that's it there's nothing else new all you need is common sense and find arc lengths uh, the lecture is pretty much over except that uh, we probably want to do a few examples together um, well, that's all the explaining there is. That's all the background there is today. Uh, nothing new. All we have is common sense and uh, that uh, the S idea. All right, so let's start. Off, let's start off with a plain example here. Very easy one, standard one, almost obligatory one because all textbooks do this example. If you have some curve like this, y equals uh, x uh, to the three halves. Let's go from zero to four. Let's find out how long is this curve. We want if we could take a, imagine taking a measuring tape. And curving it the same way and we want to know how long is that that's what the fancy name for the fancy name for that question is arc length we want to find the arc length okay so <clears throat> we use the standard idea from before we make a small little tiny triangle out of that a right triangle and we label the sides to say hey this is ds this is uh, dx and this is uh, dy a little bitty tiny distance this way dy a little one this way dx an inclined one ds and we write the Pythagorean theorem statement which would say that uh, let's go with stay with blue why not uh, let's we would say that ds square is equal to dx square plus dy square and so you got a lot of differentials here uh, the thing to keep in mind is that this is how x and y are related for this curve so uh, let me think, uh, we're going to need that in just about two seconds. ds would be equal to the square root of dx squared. You might, Some people might put parentheses here. It's, if you don't put parentheses, it's understood that they have parentheses. It's not the d and the s, it's one item, one differential. Uh, they're not separable uh, per se, it's one symbol. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, we got to do take care of business here, dx plus dy. Um, maybe I can do it right here. Let me think. Uh, no, I'll do it over here on, an, on another page. Let me copy this. This is what I need. I need that. And I need that. And I'll copy it. Let's go with a clean page. And let's get to work here. Uh, so let me think. So I, uh, here I'm going to go with dy. I'm going to slap a d on both sides. Uh, so I'll slap a d here on that side. And I'll slap a d on that side. And what that will turn into would be a dy is equal to 3 halves x, subtract 1 from it, 1 half, and do the dx. And then I'm going to need to substitute dy there, but not so much dy. I, need, I actually need to substitute a dy squared. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, just do a little bit of more grunt work. I'm going to uh, square both sides and observe what happens when I square both sides. So if I square both sides, I get the statement that dy square is equal to uh, 9 over 4 x dx square. Again, notice that sometimes people put the parentheses there, sometimes they don't. 
it's because it's considered to be one symbol. Uh, even though it's two letters, it's considered one symbol, DX. I'll leave it like that so we can get used to it. And that's going to, going to go where? That's going to go right there. We're going to substitute that right into our formula here. And there's nothing else going on here. It's just common sense. A uh, little bit of algebra. Sometimes there's more algebra. Actually, sometimes there's a lot more algebra. Even it, on the same problem, if you do it, if instead of replacing the dy, I had found solve for dx here, I could solve for it and then substitute the dx there. The algebra could be, you know, 20 times harder. It just depends on the problem. So sometimes you want, you might want to try substituting the dx, or the dy, or sometimes the dx. See how it goes. Uh, let's continue with the way we did it here. So this is dx uh, square plus. Yeah, I forgot. Sometimes I'm going to leave these parentheses off just to get it used to it. Um, it's the same thing, the x square, or in this case, I'll just be consistent. All right, and then I think I could pull out a dx square, dx square. I could come out of the print out of the square root. That would leave a one plus a nine fourths x, and that would be. I don't need this so long, and that would be times a dx. See the dx square and the dx square. If you factor it out, that leaves a one and a dx, and the dx comes out. Just algebra. Of course, most books will have you start off right on this spot right here. They have some formula, you know, they'll call this formula ds is equal to uh, 1 plus, uh, you know, y prime squared uh, dx. This is the formula that most books will have. Uh, they don't even tell you a lot of times uh, where it comes from or they don't do it. Uh, some, Whatever, I don't judge, whatever. But uh, I think this is a nice way to do it. Actually, I do judge. Them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Maybe not. But, um, let me think. Well, got to come as it is, man. The truth will set you free. I think this is a nice way to do it because, uh, I can't see it. There you go. Um, I think this is a nice way to see it because you see where it comes from. So, often I, I won't jump right to the step. Maybe sometimes I will, I don't know. But I think it's nice to, to uh, show all the steps this way, using nothing but common sense. Anyways. That's that's my DS. I'm gonna uh, take this guy. Um, let's uh, group it, copy it, and go back to finish our work here. Uh, that would go here, and now I'm ready to do the uh, adding. All from here to here is just algebra from the other page. How are we going to do the adding? That uh, of course, the same way we always do it. Um, I'm gonna go with red for emphasis here. Red and blue, timeless combination. Right here, uh, and now I observe my limits. I need X's, uh, so this is, these are my X's. Ta -ta 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 -ta. They stop and start where? They stop at, the start at zero, stop at uh, four. And now, how are we gonna do that integral? I'm gonna go with the U sub. I'm gonna say U is equal to one plus nine fourths X. That would mean that DU is equal to 9 fourths dx, and that's my dictionary. And now I will convert my integral. Um, let me think that will be u to the 1 half, and the du is worth, or sorry, the dx is worth 4 ninths du. du 4 over 9. And I'm going to convert my limits here, why not? Observe what happens when you convert the limits. You take the 4, put it in the dictionary for x. Four. That means that u is 10. Now look at the zero. This is x equals zero. These two go together. Put it into the dictionary, x equals zero. That makes u equals one. There you go. Uh, let's scroll down, give us some more room, and let's finish the work here. This would be four over nine uh, times u to the three halves times two thirds, evaluated from 10 to one meaning that this would be 4 ninths times uh, 2 thirds times 10 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves. And of course, nobody's saying anything. You can't see that. There you go. That's how we do it. Pretty easy, huh? This is like the easiest example there is for Arklings. This is just like level 1, level 0. This is what all textbooks do, first example. Because it's so nice when you take the dx and the dy, 
So we did the math over here. This turns out so simple. It's just a degree one things, degree one polynomial. So you can easily make a use of. That's why uh, this turns out to be probably the easiest example in the world. Okay, because this piece right here, the integral becomes easy. Very, very, very often, the integral here becomes more than any of us can answer. The greatest fool can ask more than the wisest person can answer about integrals. Meaning, some integrals get crazy real quick. Okay, but that one's pretty standard. I could say one more word about this. I could say, hey, what if we had done it the other way? Let's contemplate that idea. You guys want to contemplate? If, are you in a contemplating mood? Well, no. Are you guys in a contemplating kind of mood? Let's see, what if we went the other way? So this is uh, y is equal to, well, what a beginner. See, I even judge myself. Uh, all right, um, y is equal to x to the 3 halves. So what if we went the other way? So if we went the other way, I'm going to say here that, uh, there's many ways to do it, but I'm going to say here y to the uh, 2 thirds is equal to x. That's just algebra. Then I'm going to slap a D on both sides. D here, D here, so that I can get my DX expression. See right here, DX. And that's equal to 2 thirds Y to the negative uh, 1 third. And then, uh, of course, when I'm going here, then my DS is equal to the square root of uh, DX squared plus DY. See, I keep putting parentheses there. I don't need to. Um, so then uh, my ds would be equal to, I said why well, I contemplated there, what if we substitute it into the dx square? Well then, uh, my dx square is equal to, uh, my dx square is equal to, let me think, um, well I forgot my dy over here. What a beginner. Alright, so then you square both sides, so that would give you 4 over 9, uh, y to the negative 2 thirds uh, dy squared. Right, that's what it would be like if you, that's what it would be like if you square it. Um, so you plug that into here, and that would give you the following expression. Uh, so that would give you four ninths uh, y to the negative two thirds dy squared plus a dy squared, which is kind of nice because now you could pull out a dy out of there. The dy comes out because I got a dy squared and a dy squared there. And that would give you 4 ninths times y to the negative 2 thirds plus 1. Which is uh, not the same level of integral as the previous one. This is a much, much more interesting one. And here you'd probably have to do something like a trick. So I would go for something like uh, uh, y is equal to... Uh, no, I want... The, I want here's a systematic way to do it, man. This one looks like a cosine or a tangent, right? So you say you want 4 over 9y to the negative 2 thirds plus 1. That looks a lot like tangent square theta plus 1. So you would want, uh, see the ones cancel, you'd want tangent square to be equal to that. So you want the substitution to be, you want the substitution to be uh, that tangent theta is equal to 2 thirds y to the negative uh, 1 over 3. That'll work, because if I square both sides, in other words, I take the square root on, on these sides, if I square both sides, I get exactly that line. And then everything will turn out nicely. This will be turned into a monomial. The binomial will turn to monomial, which you can take the square root, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do it. Uh, I don't want to do the rest of that. Uh, what I wanted to do is show you how different the integrals can look, depending on whether you substitute for dx, for dx here, just get dy, so you can factor out dy, or you substitute for the dy here and get dx's and factor out of dx the way we did before. Totally different things. You know, difference between night and day. So just be aware of that. Okay, we leave this uh, problem alone. This one is, is done anyways. We, we got the answer. Um, and we studied two different techniques at looking at it. Let's move on to the next one. Take it to uh, level two, yeah? This is level two. Um... Actually, they're all the same. They're not that. The only the only difference is that algebra gets a little bit tiny more involved, and sometimes the integrals are harder than other times. Other than that, they're all the same thing. They all just use common sense. Watch, you won't be able to take it. Look, you won't be able to distinguish this from the last one. 
other than different algebra and perhaps a different integral. That's why a lot of books will often say, hey, don't integrate, just set up the integral to represent the arc length, which I think is sensible. That's really a good idea because it lets you practice inter you know, setting up the integral, but you realize uh, that the complexities with some integrals are immense. We only have like two or three skills for integrals. U-subs, trig-subs, basic. Uh, that's about it. So if it's not one of those, you're kind of out of luck for now. Anyways, uh, so let's let's play the same game here. So I, uh, I'm i going to cut this up into infinite many little uh, S's here. Just imagine having infinite many of these. Many, 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 many S's. They're straight like this. And uh, we take a typical one here. This one uh, looks to me like a DX here, DY here, DS here. The beginning is always the same. Look, this should look familiar. Uh, DS squared. I'm going to try to pre prevent myself, restrain myself from using parentheses because you don't need to. This is one symbol. Uh, ds squared plus uh, dy squared. So my ds is equal to the square root of uh, dx squared plus dy squared. Does that look familiar? Yeah, because it's always the same. So let's do some algebra here. Uh, we're going to need on the next page to do the algebra. These are the things we're going to need, okay? We're going to need that guy. Well, oh, not again. I'll just remember it. And we're going to need this one. Ln cosine x. So we're going to need um, y is equal to ln uh, cosine x. And I'm going to need that my ds is equal to uh, the square root of uh, dx squared plus dy squared. And the rest of this is just common sense algebra. Let's do it. Unless you guys are afraid. Or unless you gotta go watch something on TV like Dancing with the Stars or something like that. I'm just kidding. I don't judge. All right. So this this would be dy. Um, dy is equal to one over uh, cosine x times. Let me see. The derivative of ln of stuff would be one over stuff times the derivative of stuff. Uh, so times the derivative of cosine x. Uh, looks that looks to me like. What's the differential of cosine? That would be negative uh, sine x times dx all over cosine x. Or said differently, dy is equal to negative tangent x dx. Now that's need to that needs to go in there, right there. That needs to go right there in the dy square. So I'm still going to clean it up some more and figure out what dy square is. So I square both sides. Watch this is how I square both sides. Square that side and square that side. Pretty nice, huh? And that's going to give me tangent squared x dx squared. I know you're probably wondering, where did the negative go? Well, it's squared, so it's gone. That goes in there, and I'm still in the process of cleaning up my ds. So this will be a dx squared plus a tangent squared x dx squared. Nice, because I see what I did is I got rid of my dy, just one language, x language, all x's, so that I could pull out the x out of out of this radical. That would become one plus a tangent squared x, and the x comes out. And again, this is where most books will tell you to start. They'll tell you to start with one plus you know one plus y prime squared dx. Most books just tell you to start here. I don't. I, okay, whatever. I like to start it this way, so. Um, and nobody sponsors the hands, man, so I could do whatever I want. I like to start it this way, so this way, this is the way it's going to go. Um, now what? Alright, so 1 plus tangent squared. Isn't that something famous? From the famous sheet? Where's my famous sheet? You know the one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Okay, one more shot. I'll get it one more shot. Right there. Isn't that something famous? What's tangent? Uh, no, 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 no. What's tangent squared plus one? Secant squared theta, right? You remember? So let's see. What will that do for us? Uh, this will turn us into a secant. So ds is equal to a secant x uh, dx, and that's kind of nice. And now I'm ready. Mm, go back. Uh, this one turns out to be uh, secant uh, x uh, dx. After all that algebra, from here to here. Just a lot of algebra. But now I'm ready for the magical stuff, man. The magical thing that the jewel from the 17th century. 
What was the jewel from the 17th century? Right here, the jewel. The, uh, one of the crowning intellectual achievements of mankind. And I love that one. Comes, now it's time for that. Super S. And then I have to, whoa, 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 where was that? Right here, Super S. And now I need to observe my limits here. These are X limits. So I'm looking at X. Uh, shoot, I forgot to give you the Xs. Um, usually that's gotta be given in the problem. But today I'm kind of being a beginner. So I'll go from zero to uh, pi over four. Yeah, zero to pi over four. Just go from zero to pi over four. Um, we could easily have made it from zero to pi over six or whatever. Uh, the point is to practice our skills here, so that would be good enough to practice. Um, that would be equal to, uh oh, what about this integral? Isn't that one of the famous ones where that had that very, very, very specialized trick where you multiply top and bottom by secant x plus tangent x and then you do an ln u sub? Or, yeah, you remember, right? So this is ln of uh, secant x plus tangent x. Super famous super nice trick on that one and there my x is going from pi over 4 to 0 and that will give you ln of um, both of these are positive so I don't really need the absolute value secant uh, x let me see secant uh, pi over 4 plus tangent pi over 4 minus ln of secant 0 plus tangent 0. You got to be careful here. Often people think that just because 0 is 1. Secant 0, that's 1 over cos, and that's actually equal to 1. And so, um, uh, yeah, I'll let you figure that out. That part is boring. Anyways, nice, huh? Finding the arc, and this would be level 2. Uh, really, they're all the same level. The only distinction is that, see, they all start off the same, they all start off the same. The only distinction is this part right here where we go, usually go to the other page and do all the algebra. That, uh, that part might be a little bit different. And then the integral may be a little bit different at times. But other than that, uh, the problems all work out uh, the same way. We're using uh, just common sense and the deep S, the jewel from the 17th century. Want to try another one? Timeless one. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's go to level 3 now. This one is a little bit different because it's, it's a parametric equation, meaning that there's a parameter, t, that defines x and at the same time defines y. Various values of t will give you different x and y points, and if you plot these, we had one like this last time, and I told you, if this is new to you, you need to stop the tape and plot these and get to know it. All you need to do is just plot plot the points and you'll, you'll understand it. You make a little chart with t's, with x's, and y's. Anyways, this is a super famous curve. Galileo was trying working on this. All the big names worked on this. It's called a cycloid. Newton, Galileo, Bernoulli, you name it. All the big shots um, have been working on this um, over the centuries. And so here we take an interesting question. What's the arc length? Um, by the way, cycloid means something like this, in case you're not familiar. If you were to take a little circle here and you were to spot a point on the circle, say on that part of the circle, and it say, uh, say we group these, let me see if I can group that, yeah, grouped it, and say you were to spin it, and make this thing spin, ta -ta 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 -ta. I can't spin it that well, but, well, I'm trying to, but if you were to keep, keep spinning it, um, and then you keep going, uh, like this, and you, the idea is to trace, to trace the point that it makes, well, Hopefully that gives you the idea. That's called a cycloid. So the idea is to figure out, you know, the cycloid is the point that that the trace or the tra trajectory made by that point on the circle as it rolls over, uh, say, on a flat surface. Anyways, um, that's kind of nice. Today we're interested in, in finding out how long that is. Um, if you think about it, this question could be done without any calculus you could have done it in high school but that's not the point I just want to practice our skills here um, so here we go uh, we break it up into many 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 little tiny pieces oh, let's go from 0 to 2 pi by the way uh, we'll, we'll call it uh, t we'll say t goes from uh, 2 pi to 
to zero. Let's just set that off. Let's start off with that from the beginning. And uh, and then the, and then we're going to uh, do the usual here. We're going to break up this cyclo thing into many many little tiny pieces like this, and we'll find uh, each of them, each of their little lengths. Imagine infinite many of these little straight pieces. Um, let me think. The ds would be equal to as usual uh, the dx square plus the dy square. And then uh, that's it. The rest of it is uh, is. Um, Algebra, let's do the algebra here. DS, yeah, there's not enough room here. So I'm going to go with another page here. Uh, let me think. So I'm going to slap a D on both sides, a D on that side, and a D on that side. And I'm going to slap a D on that side and a D on that side. I'll do the Y's first. So the DY would be equal to the differential of 4, 0. The differential of cosine is negative, but I got a negative there, so that would give me a 4 sine T DT. Stop me if I'm lying. All right, so uh, by the way, I'm going to be substituting a dx square there because this is all in terms of t. So I'm going to not change it to x's, not change it to y's. I'm changing everything to t. So I might as well compute dy squared, which would be 16 uh, sine square, sine squared t dt squared, right? That's what happens when you square this. All right, let's, let's, let's leave that alone for a second. Let's work on this side. Uh, the dx is equal to 4 dt minus uh, 4 cosine t, again, dt. And I want to square both sides. Uh, so here's how I square both sides. I square that side and I square that side. Notice here I have a binomial, so i got to do the foiling thing. Uh, i got to distribute that carefully. So I'll, be, I'll get the dx squared plus a 16 minus 4 times for 16 times 2 is 32. Uh, 32 cosine t's. Let me think, think, think. Plus 16 uh, cosine squared t. And then a dt. No. What a beginner. No room for the dt. So, so then uh, this will give me that times dt. There's my dx square and there's my dy square. Now, we concluded earlier that my ds was equal to the square root of dx squared plus uh, dy squared. So I've got my dx here, I've got my dy squared here. Put them, this one here, put that one there, put that one there. The dx squared and dy squared. Am I using fancy stuff? No, just common sense. Plug things in there. A little bit of algebra. Just to uh, make it look impressive, but there's nothing going on here. Wow, this is a miss. Let's do it. Uh, 16 minus 32 uh, cosine t plus 16 cosine squared t. That was my dx part. Um, cosine squared t. Huh. Plus 16 sine squared t. And all that has a dt squared. Which, of course, you know, you know what I'm going to do with that dt squared. It's going to come outside the radical as just a plain dt. Same as usual. But I think it clean up the inside as well. Because look at this. Uh, doesn't this become... I got a 16 cosine square and a 16 sine square. I can exchange that. The sine square plus the cosine square is equal to 1. So this becomes just 16. Um, this whole thing just becomes 16. And that can be added to that one. Changing my ds to be equal to 16 plus 16 is 32 minus 32 cosine t. Ooh, I'm starting to like this problem a lot. Nice problem. Uh, 32 minus 32 cosine t dt. Nice. And then, then you can pull out the 32. 32 is 16 times 2. That means 16 times 2. What is that? 4 times the square root of 2. And then all that times the square root of uh, 1 minus a cosine t dt. You can't see it. But wait, there's more. See, this is a binomial, right? 1 minus cosine. You can't take that out of the square root that easily. And you think, darn it, I wish there was some way that we could exchange this binomial for a monomial. And you start to think, let's look at our identity sheet. Which I'm going to get the right one the first try. Identity sheet, where are you? T -t 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 -t. Identity sheet. Come here. Which one are you? Right here. Bam. 
I told you. See why they pay me? Right here, one minus a cosine something, right here. This one would tell you that twice uh, sine squared theta would be equal to one minus a cosine two theta. Or if you cut both of these angles in half, it would tell you that two times sine squared x over two would be equal to one minus uh, cosine two times x over two, which would be equal to x. These two statements say the same thing. All you gotta do is substitute, uh, if you wanna see it this way, substitute theta is equal to x over two, and that would get you there. This is exactly, exactly what I need. Uh, one minus a cosine x binomial, I can exchange it for a monomial. Yeah, based on that, that identity right there. Power of exchanging binomials into monomials. Man, that stuff, that stuff's for the ages. Uh, so, I'm um, right here. I'm ready to make my exchange here. Uh, this one can be exchanged for uh, ds is equal to four times the square root of two times uh, the square root of two times uh, sine square t over two, all that times a dt. Again, we need to extend this. That's your back. I can extend it, and then that cleans up nicely. So that ds is equal to four, I got the square root of here, square root of that, four times two times sine t over two times dt. Or ds is equal to eight times sine of t over two dt. Yes or no? Um, and now, and now I'm gonna take this guy right here. Um, I'm just gonna take this one right here and group it and copy it and go back to where I was here. Bam, right there. Um, that's where that's where I left off last time. So, um, like I said, this process is always, always the same except for the algebra between here and here. That was the other page. That's uh, this page where we do all the algebra. But other than the algebra, man, they're, all, they're always the same. And then we use the super jewel of the 17th century fundamental theorem of, al of calculus to take care of business here. My t is going from 0 to uh, to pi, so that becomes equal to 8. The antiderivative of sine would be cosine. The derivative of cosine would be negative sine, so i got to do a negative there. Uh, t over 2, and also I have to divide by 1 half, so I have to divide by 1 half, and I'm going from um, 2 pi to 0, so that would give me negative uh, 16 um, times uh, 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi, that would be, holy macaroni, cosine of 2 pi minus cosine of 0. What would that be? Are you guys afraid? Negative 16, uh, sorry, cosine of 2 pi over 2, 0 over 2, that would be give you cosine of pi, which would be negative 1, minus cosine of 0, which would be positive 1. Um, Cosine of zero is one, so that would give you a total of um, eighteen. Uh, sorry, this would be I'm spacing out negative two times that thirty-two. There you go. Told you. All right, so uh, here's a little story for us. Suppose you've got a bird here flying, and uh, the bird is flying and flying, and uh, doo -doo 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 flying, and flying, 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 and then at one point or another, while the bird is flying, it drops something, and uh, the minute it drops something, whoa, it drops something. And the bird keeps flying and flying and flying, but the something that it dropped keeps dropping. And then the bird keeps flying and flying and flying after it drops something. Now here's a question for you. Suppose that the thing that it dropped was initially dropped at 169 feet above the ground and it took a trajectory defined by this curve. Uh, the question is, what is the total distance traveled by the something that the bird dropped? Pretty interesting, huh? This is what most books call application problems. And I call 
the armpit of mathematics but whatever so uh, suppose you drop something and then you want to know oh, what's the distance traveled by the total trajectory by the item dropped by the bird so so the really it's just the only thing different here is the story but the uh, process would be pretty similar so let's make this our final uh, example here uh, for today I, I may do one more but I'll, I'll keep that one on a separate file uh, separate video because I think this video is long enough already uh, you, you probably have to take a bathroom break by now uh, so so we'll make this our little DS here uh, make this a DS and everything that we always do is still the same thing the DS is equal to the square root of the DX square plus a DY square and then uh, we go to another page and try to work out the details for this uh, for this DS um, so so that there's our DY here so let's slap a D on both sides a D on that side a D on that side and what does that lead us with leave us with leaves us with DY is equal to negative 2 over 36 X DX and that's going to be substituted into our famous common sense formula dx square for plus dy square a tiny little micro Pythagorean theorem and again you have a choice substitute the dy uh, or uh, substitute the dx uh, since the dy is already solved for here I'm gonna go with that hopefully that integral is easier dy square would be 4 over 36 squared x squared dx square that's what's going to go right there for the dx square sorry for the dy square that will make my ds be the dx squared plus the dy squared that will give you 4 over 36 uh, squared x squared dx squared dx dx I could pull that out so my ds is equal to uh, the square root of 1 plus 4 over uh, 36 squared um, x squared uh, dx and at that point you've got yourself a nice little uh, uh, trig sub integral so I will make my in I'm gonna make it I'm gonna go with grade this time I'm gonna make uh, x be equal to I know it's a tangent tangent theta because 1 plus tangent square is famous all I have to do is fix this I don't want that 4 there so I'm gonna put a 2 on the bottom so when I square it I get a 4 killed I don't want that there so I'm gonna put a 36 on the top so when I square it I get 36 square that would make my ds be equal to uh, 1 plus tangent square theta uh, after I've substituted everything there these uh, coefficients will kill each other oh but I still have a d uh, x over here to deal with so I gotta complete the dictionary as usual me think completing the dictionary would involve I'll do it right here uh, right here so my differential my DX would be equal to uh, DX would be equal to 36 over 2 secant squared theta D theta that's what was go that, that it, DX goes here so I'll have a uh, 36 over 2 secant squared theta D theta Wow how interesting and then um, and then what keep going don't be afraid so then your DS would be equal to tangent so I got 36 over 2 well isn't that just uh, 18 so I go 18 this part is just secant secant square but take the square root I got another secant there so I got secant to the third theta d theta now I'm good so so I go back here and I get I simplified after all that algebra the ds is equal to 18 times secant to the third theta d theta and then um, and then what and then I want to slap through the, the jewel of the 17th century the fundamental theorem of, of calculus and then uh, I don't want to put a x limits here I want to note that this is theta and uh, I'll just leave it as 18 um, integral of secant to the third theta d theta okay now what do we do with secant to the third I should probably tell you again this is the reason why a lot of times books will tell you just set up the integral and don't do it well let's find the theta limits I'll find the theta th limits in just a second but let me finish the sentence a lot of books will tell you set up the integral and don't evaluate that's because a lot of times these integrals are really beyond our 
our current abilities, our current ideas. And this is one of those. Uh, if you've if you've been with the course, you've done uh, we've done use of tricks of we've done uh, um, a couple of these. But but this one requires something called by parts, and that we haven't done. It's actually usually done in second semester. So we're gonna have to leave it at that. Just to put the limits in there. Uh, let me think. X was going from where does X go to? You gotta find that spot right there. That spot is the pot, spot when Y is equal to zero. So you said zero is equal to one sixty nine. This is when the y-axis meets the red one, so that's when uh, y is equal to zero meets y equals this thing. Set them equal to each other, and you get that 169 times 36 is equal to x squared, so x equals the square root of that. 169, 36, but that's 13 squared times 6 squared. If you take the square root, that's 13 times 6. 13 times 6, that's 60, 78. 78, so x is going from x is going from uh, 0 to 78. So when x is uh, 0, um, then you get uh, tan inverse 0, which is equal to 0. Uh, 0 is equal to tan 36 over 2 tan theta, but the 36 cancels. So theta is equal to 0. And when x is uh, 78, you got 78 times 2 divided by 36 is equal to tangent theta. Um, let me think. So 78s cancel. Like you get four. Uh, four time four is equal to tangent theta. So theta is equal to tan inverse of four. And so uh, going from zero to tan inverse of four. That would be the correct limits. And you'll have to wait for a second semester calculus to finish the uh, the bird problem. Okay. All right, that's good for, for right now. Uh, if you have, uh, take a little break and then come back and check out one more example uh, using um, polar coordinates. It should be interesting. It's totally different. Well, not totally different. Everything is the same except the steps from here to here because the algebra is a little bit different when you have R's and thetas. Okay? All right, we'll see you guys next time. Pero con la de pescado.